In this video I would like to show you some performance numbers of hard drives and solid state disks you'll get today. For hard drives here I depicted three different devices. This is more like a device for normal users, so to say. This is heavy write I.O. and this is even heavier write I.O. So this is like something you would like to get for your PC or for a server relying on a large number of those drives. So this is a SATA drive and it has a sequential read performance of 112 megabytes per second. Sequential write is similar performance. Random read is only 16.5 milliseconds on average. Random write is about 18.58 on average. Size is relatively big, so this is a four terabytes drive. And if you look at the ratio of the euros per gigabyte, you say this is four cents per gigabyte you're paying. So this is really, really cheap. And this is a good deal in many, many situations. If you go towards server computing, professional hard drives, then you probably go for something like that. This is a Seagate Savio 15K. 15K here means it retains at 15,000 rotations per minute. So this is pretty loud. You won't put that into your P PC under your desk, but it's really, really fast. So you see that here with respect to random read and random write. Random read is like five milliseconds. Random write is faster. This is very typical for these devices. This is because the devices, they either store the write operation on the built-in cache or they just write it somewhere close to the current position of the hard disk heads. Yeah? So they don't go to random position. They really try to write it in place to make sure the write operations are fast. Sequential read and write is also pretty decent here, 174 megabytes per second. But you see the price is a huge difference. So this is a factor 20 more expensive than this device. And we have here 89 cents, 0 0.89 euros per gigabyte. This is pretty expensive. And you also see that this is way smaller, 300 gigabytes only when compared to the other drives. So this is more like the Western digital is more like storage, large data, video, stuff like that. This is really smaller data that you have to be, that you, that you have to access fast, business critical data, stuff like that. You also have the better interface, which is able to transfer way more data than SATA. Yeah, so this is really professional use. And if you pay, and you can even pay more if you want. So here's another variant from Seagate, even more powerful than the other drive. Here you get a 220 megabytes per second read performance, 222 write performance. Random read and write is like in the same ballpark price we, um, we couldn't get from the internet here. Yeah, let's look at SSDs. So what are the performance numbers there? Here we have four different devices. And I'd like to start here because that's what I explained in my previous video. Those are SSDs, which means they sit where the hard drives used to sit. So they're really replacing the hard drives and they connect to the same interfaces here, it's SATA or SAS. So let's look at those devices first. Well, the price here is 79, and if you compare that with the most powerful, and if you compare that with the Seagate here, you already see this is cheaper than this Seagate hard disk drive. And what do you get for that? Well, you get 530 megabytes per second sequential read, 390 sequ sequential write, a random access time of 90 microseconds or 0 0.09 milliseconds. So that's pretty impressive. And here we already see this effect of the IOs per second. This is 90,000, 90,000 operations per second. And this is way more than just one second divided by 0 0.09. One second divided by 0 0.000, 0.9. This is 90, um, this number is 90 microseconds. You will end up at 11,000, 11,000 operations per second, but here you get eight times more. This is 90,000 IO operations per second. So this means the drive can handle those operations in parallel and can do some magic to be able to, to cope with eight times more 
random I.O. operations. So this is among the fastest general purpose customer drives and here the, the price is uh, in a still very decent range for an SSD. Let's look at the second device here. This is a little bigger than the Samsung. You get a way higher sequential read. It's like twice the performance. This is one gigabyte per second, 1.1 gigabyte per second. You can read with that. 400 megabyte write performance. Random access is unclear here, but uh, you get more I.O. operations. So 130,000 I.O. operations per second. So this is a device that you will have a hard time challenging as an end user. This is already professional computing, something you may want to build into a server. So other than those SSDs, there are different ways of connecting flash memory to a computer. And one is to use a PCI bus. Those are PCI drives. And those devices are not limited by those interfaces anymore. So here, the performance numbers are kind of insane. Here you get like six gigabytes per second read performance and up almost four gigabytes per second write performance, sequential random access time. Again, like a factor two better, it's 45 microseconds or 0 0.045 milliseconds. You have 1.3 million I/O operations per second, and this is really super fast. This is high end, and you also see that when you look at the price, it's about nine euros per gigabyte as of the recording of this video. And you get up to 10 terabytes on that device directly connected to PCI. So another vendor is this one here. This is OCZ. It's even a little more expensive. Here you get up to 2.8 gigabytes per second, and here the other numbers are a little unclear. This is probably more like high-end sequential and random write. So there are a couple of options in this space. And the bottom line for you is those SSDs may make a difference. Again, especially with respect to random I.O. So as I explained already before, if you have a problem with random I.O. in your system, you better think about whether an SSD may solve the problem. A standard SSD has like 100 times better random access time plus this feature that you can handle requests in parallel very easily. And if that is not enough, you might even think about if, if the budget allows for that, because those devices here, those two devices are way more expensive, but maybe it's a way to fix the performance problem because here you get even better random performance. And here we are talking about a factor 10 more IO operations per second compared to those SSDs. The random access time is by a factor two better than the standard SSD devices. So it's important to really keep that in mind. Sometimes hardware can fix problems very easily. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did. Or you look at our website, infosys.uni-silent.de. See you there.